Now that we've seen a bad solution to implementing a like system, let's take a look at a better solution. All right, so here's what we are going to do. We're gonna add in a third table called likes. This table is gonna have a couple of rows inside of it that's going to relate a user to a post. So for example, the very first row right here has a user ID value of three. So that would be user ID three right here, Janny. And then a post ID of five. So it'd be that post right there. So this would indicate that Janny likes post with ID five. So it's very easy for us to write out some different queries and figure out, say, what user likes a given post and what posts are liked by uh, different users. To make sure that a given user can only like each of these different posts exactly one time, we could also add on a unique constraint. The unique constraint would be on the likes table, and we would add it to the columns user ID and post ID. Now remember, whenever we add in a unique constraint and list out multiple columns, that does not mean that we want just the values inside of the user ID column to be unique and just the values inside of post ID to be unique. Instead, that means that we want to essentially take the values inside of post ID, concatenate them together with the values inside of user ID, and make sure that the resulting value is unique. So the plus here is not meant to say that we're going to add these numbers together. It more means that we're going to join these two values together and make sure the resulting value is unique and that there's no other incidence of those same value. So if we ever tried to add in, say, another like here with three and five, well, there's already another row with three and five. So this would violate the unique constraint and we could not add in another like. So that's how we're gonna make sure that any given user only likes a very certain post one single time. This kind of approach is also going to make sure that unliking a post is really simple and straightforward. Let's say that Janny doesn't want to like the post with ID five anymore. To remove that, or to make sure that the user doesn't like that given post, we would then find the relevant row, so that's this one right here, and just delete it. And just like that, no longer does Janny like the post with ID 5. That's pretty much it. That's how we're going to implement our like system. Now, if we take this style of approach, we can start to write out a lot of interesting queries to figure out some really critical information that we'd want to probably display inside of our application. So for example, if we wanted to display the number of likes on post with ID number three, we could write a query like this. We could find a list of the people who like the post with ID three by writing out something like this. We could start to calculate some more interesting metrics and statistics, like say the IDs of the top five most liked posts by doing a little bit more fancy query. And then finally, we could also figure out exactly which posts a given user liked, and we could get information on them. This like system, or this kind of approach, is useful not only for likes, but also something like favorites as well. So if we want to allow users to favorite different posts, we could use maybe some kind of favorites table. And it's going to obey a lot of the same rules as a like system. So we probably want to only allow a user to favorite a post one time. We probably want to figure out how often or which posts a particular user favorited, maybe find the mo most favorited posts, and so on. Same thing with bookmarks as well. If we wanna keep track of bookmarks and allow a user to say, hey, I just wanna hold on to this post, well, same exact style would work. So you can tell that this pattern is pretty flexible and allows us to kind of track this relationship with different meanings tied to it. So this definitely works well, but there is a little downside to it. Probably two different downsides. First off, with this kind of exact schema we have right here, so a table called likes with just ID, user ID, and post ID, we don't really have the ability to add a different kind of like or a reaction. So in this case, we have just really likes. We don't really have the ability to say, oh, this user dislikes this post, or this user is excited for this post, or is sad about this post. It doesn't have that kind of Facebook style reaction. So we might try to do a little bit more work here and figure out how to handle that. The other thing that this system currently doesn't really address is the ability for a comment to be liked. So in that solution we just took a look at, it was really just about adding a like to a post and it didn't really, really allow us the ability to like a comment instead. Now, having some kind of like system that allows a user to like either a post or a comment is kind of a challenge in its own right. And that's actually something that we're gonna have a discussion on in just a moment. So let's take a pause right here. We're gonna come back in the next video. And we're gonna to start to think about how to allow a user to like a post or a comment. 
And we're also gonna think about some possible solution to also allow a user to maybe be excited about a post or just have some kind of generic reaction. So two more things to follow up on. Let's do that in the next video.